The binomial distribution that we discussed previously assumes replacement. That is, the probabilities p and 1 minus p don't change as successes or failures are witnessed. That is, if we see a success, we theoretically put that success back into the population so that our likelihood of successes don't change. We replace that observation back into the population. We assume that p and 1 minus p are probabilities that represent averages found from a large number of observations that are sufficiently independent of each other. With the next distribution that we're going to discuss, the hypergeometric distribution, we address situations where the independence assumption isn't met. That is, if we view a success in an observation, then we have one fewer successes that we can view in the remaining sample. The hypergeometric distribution is good for describing a finite and probably small population, where we know that the population falls into one category, call them successes, and the other half falls into the complement of that category, call them failures. As such, the hypergeometric distribution is often said to assume no replacement. Say that we're assembling a committee of size 5 selected at random from three chemists and six physicists. Other than sounding like a good time, what else do we know about this committee? We know that it's being drawn from a finite group, and we know that the group is made up of two categories, chemists and physicists. In the binomial problem, we knew that some percentage generally fell into one category, therefore the complement fell into the other category. But here we know exactly how many are in each category in this finite population. We also know that the members of the committee are not independent. For example, if we add one chemist to the committee, we have one fewer chemist remaining to be chosen. Therefore, the likelihood of choosing another chemist changes. Let's generally define the random variable y as the number of successes in a number of trials n. Capital N is the population size. We're picking a number little n out of this population. We know that the population is made up of two categories. R of the capital N are successes. Therefore, the remaining capital N minus R are failures. Little y is the number of successes that we found in our group little n. Therefore, the remaining observations in our group are n minus y failures. The probability that random variable y takes on the value little y is described with a classical probability. The number of ways we can witness little y successes and therefore n minus y failures in the numerator and the total number of ways we can choose a group of n regardless of the number of successes and failures in the denominator. We use combinations to find this probability. R choose y times capital N minus R choose little n minus y in the numerator. This gives us the number of ways to get a group of n with y successes. Then capital N choose little n, the number of ways to pick a group of n out of capital N in the denominator. Using the language of events, another way to think about this probability is with an intersection statement in the numerator. Back to our committee of five selected at random from three chemists and six physicists. We define our random variable x as the number of chemists on the committee of size five. What is the probability that we select a committee that has two chemists? We have to choose two chemists out of three possible chemists. Then naturally we have three more members of the committee and they must be physicists. So we have to choose three physicists from six physicists. In the denominator, we count the ways we can select a committee of size 5 across all 3 plus 6 equals 9 choices. This probability is 0.4762. Note that the possible realizations of random variable x include only 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we can use the hypergeometric distribution function to calculate the probability of each of those realizations. We see from the distribution that the most likely realization is x equals 2 we are most likely to see a committee of size 5 made up of two chemists and three physicists. Recall again the properties of probability. Each realization has a probability between 0 and 1, inclusive of 0 and 1, and the sum of probabilities of all realizations must be 1, or maybe a little off due to rounding errors. The expected value and variance are a little difficult to derive, so we'll just show the punchline. The expected value is n times r divided by capital N. In our committee example, the expected value of random variable x would be 5 times 3 divided by 9, or 1.67 chemists. On average, we'd expect to see 1.67 chemists on the committee. That is, 
If we simulated this process, choosing a committee of size five from three chemists and nine physicists over and over a bunch of times, we'd see 1.67 chemists on average. The variance is much less intuitive. The variance of the number of chemists on the committee would be 0.56 chemist squared. Note, that's different from square chemists. And the standard deviation would be 0.75 chemists. To recap, like the binomial distribution, we're interested in counting the number of observations that fall into one of two categories. Unlike the binomial distribution, we assume no replacement occurs. We have a finite population, we know the exact makeup of that population with respect to the two categories, and we calculate the probability of drawing a particular number of one category in a group of size n from the population.